Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video as we gear up to the Christmas break for many people, I thought I'd just show you how broken the Conservatives are right now by pointing out 10 stories from this week. Each one is a sign that the Tories are in trouble and that there were 10 such events within the space of a week just shows how out of control they are. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So it's quite funny because effectively what this is, is a roundup of some news from this week. And someone recently suggested I do round up news videos at the end of each week. Uh, I don't think it would work in general, but I'm going to make an exception in this case because this has been a bumper week. And, and, and you know, it's, it features some fairly amazing stories that are not going to be able to make it to a full video on my channel. And I, I, I thought, like with Parliament going into recess for Christmas... I thought the political news would die down for a bit. And I thought, well, you know, that's okay. I'll be going for a reduced schedule from Christmas Eve anyway for a few days. But it's like, no, if anything, it cranked up to 11. So let's go through this rundown of top 10 stories this week, which are, which are problematic for the Tories in some way or other. So the first, this is no particular order. It's not chronological or anything. But in the first one, Peter Bone recall confirmed. Wellingborough by-election is on. That's pretty huge. That wasn't certain. There was some doubt about whether the recall petition would succeed or not. That's a big one. Very knotty for the Conservatives. First of all, Peter Bone probably wants to stand as the candidate. The Conservatives probably don't want him to stand. Um, but we'll also get, and I did a video on this, we're also going to get to see a slightly different campaign. If you look at the by-elections this year, They've been run by Greg Hans, the, the former party chair, who was a bit comical. Um, it's going to be run by a professional. It's Isaac Levido is now running Conservative campaign headquarters from next month. So basically in just over a week. So presumably he will have direct influence on the way the Wellingborough by-election campaign is run. So it'll be interesting from that point of view. Second, related... Tory MPs fear Nigel Farage are going to stand in Wellingborough. That's what the Express are pushing. That's their line. They're really pushing this idea that Tory MPs are scared shitless of Nigel Farage. And it's like, my goodness me. The thing, I mean, he won't stand in Wellingborough. Why would he stand in Wellingborough? He would lose very badly. And all it would do is crush the Tory vote even more. But that the Tories seem to fear him means they've got no chance of sorting out a sensible strategy for election year. You know, it's just a sign they really could just make things worse because they're going to tilt more and more to the extremes where there are vanishingly small number of available votes. Third, Victoria Atkins drops a bit of a bollock with doctors. I'm going to have to correct myself here. I did put a post on the video. I'm afraid I got my Victorias mixed up. Apologies to Victoria Prent. I said Victoria Prentice in the video yesterday. It's not. It's Victoria Atkins. Sorry about that. But Victoria Atkins, the health secretary, got herself into a right mess. And I don't know exactly what she intended by this. She got herself into a mess by calling junior doctors doctors in training. She was citing the fact that the British Medical Association used the term often doctors in training, even though they will use junior doctors for public communications because that's what the public understand. The BMA view is that doctors in training sounds better than junior doctors. It doesn't. They, they say junior doctors infantilizes the term. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. You have junior and senior of all sorts of professions. You have junior and senior ministers. Like, there's nearly a hundred junior ministers. They don't consider themselves to be like, considered to be infants. It's a term. You know, Victoria uh, Atkins herself, who the health secretary, she's a barrister by training. She's a qualified barrister. But because she's not a KC, she's considered a junior barrister. Is that insulting? No, it's not. You have it in every profession. But whether she... Whether she was trying to, it would absolutely be mental if it turns out that she's actually tried to, to use this statement to get on the side of doctors because actually it's made things 10 times worse. So whether she's been doing it to try and drive a wedge between the government and doctors, which would be self-defeating, or whether she's done it to try and get them on side and has done the opposite. So in other words, she's just incompetent as a communicator. It has been a mess for the government. 
Fourth one, top trolling from Keir Starmer with fatigues in Estonia. I'm not going to go too much about that. I did do a video earlier today. You can check that out. But basically, Keir Starmer has gone to Estonia to cement his support for NATO. He donned military fatigues. And the Telegraph and the right wing in general are going absolutely mad. He shouldn't be doing it. He's a lawyer. He shouldn't be doing it. And yet the same Telegraph, the Tory client media, has published images of Rishi Sunak, Boris Johnson and Liz Truss in military fatigues, doing photo shoots, and they've been presenting those positively. The reason they hate the fact that Starmer's done it is because Starmer has done it quite well. Uh, the fifth one is we may see a technical recession. In practical terms, it makes no difference whether, like, we've got a stagnant economy. Economists have said that our economy's felt like it's in recession for over a year, right? All a recession is, is your economy shrinks two quarters consecutively. Now, people get a head up about the word recession, technical recession, it's not necessarily a big deal. You might have an economy that's been booming and then the bubble bursts, so to speak. It doesn't necessarily mean like a big crash like we had in 2008. It may just be that it, it, it contracts a little bit for six months. You're into a recession, you've got a recession, right? But it's but your economy was or was going really strong. So it's just come down to still good, but not as good as it was. Or you can have what we've got, which is a stagnant economy for 15 years, but no recession. Well, which is better? I'd rather have the booming economy that then contracts a little bit, you know, than, than one that's just stagnant all the way through. However, because the word recession is so politically charged, if we end up with a technical recession in election year, Rishi Sunak is in a lot of trouble. And the reason this has come about, quarter three was deemed to be zero growth. Zero growth, not minus 0.1, not plus 0.1. The Office for National Statistics with, with better data now have reviewed that and said, actually, our economy contracted in quarter three. So it's minus 0.1% growth. So that means if it contracts in quarter four, and there's a good chance it will because the October figures were worse than expected. If it ends up with a contraction in quarter four, which is not certain, that means it will be technical recession. That means Labour will say we're in a recession and there's nothing the Conservatives can do against it. It'll be in some of the headlines, right? That is a major problem for Sunak in election year. He will be sweating over this. Sixth one was the U-turn on the stupid immigration policy. Again, I did a video on that today. But basically, the government adopted a policy of making uh, foreign-born partners of British citizens, if they want their family visa, have to earn about £38,000 to qualify. At the moment, it's about £18,000. Um, absolutely ridiculous, asking people to earn well over the national medium average income. And it was only done to try and stop Robert Jenrick, the former immigration minister, from resigning. He resigned anyway. Now they're stuck with this stupid policy. So Sunak is trying to scale back on it. He's making a mess of it. And he's being attacked from all sides. Seven was Mordaunt's WhatsApp bombshell. She has signed a witness statement, which is available on the... Uh, check out my videos on that from earlier today, where I have posted it in the link on those descriptions. She's, paid, she's submitted a witness statement to the COVID inquiry, which says that she had converse, WhatsApp conversations with Boris Johnson in 2020 about shielding care homes and that those messages mysteriously disappeared in 2021. So not from her end. She hasn't removed them. And she, well, so she says, she says she tried to contact Boris Johnson's chief of staff about it and they refused to talk to her about it. They refused to hold a meeting with her. So that's suspicious. That would suggest that someone has deleted messages. And it's one thing, as I said in the video, to carelessly fail to preserve records. It's another to actively destroy them. That's a criminal offence. Speaking of criminal offences, then there was Michelle Moan's gotcha for Lord Bethel. Now, I did, a, again, I did a video on this, the big news. Lord Bethel, junior, uh, junior minister at the time in the health and uh, social care department, in 2020, he says he changed his phone in 2021 and lost all of his phone records from before that time. That includes all of his phone records from 2020. Then he gets into an argument with Michelle Moan this week and he posts by way of proof of something, which it wasn't, a phone message from 2020. Oh, she said, I thought you lost those. 
and everyone else is going, oh, Lord Bethel, I thought you signed a witness statement so you didn't have those messages anymore. What's going on? So that's potentially contempt of Parliament. Only there's been a little addition. Michelle Moan, a couple of days ago, has tweeted to the Department for Health and Social Care's official Twitter handle, so the government, and she's doing this in a public forum. She said she's recorded a telephone conversation with a senior civil servant from the department who said that they would make the National Crime Agency investigation go away if she would give the government some money. In other words, presumably pay back some of what they reckon she owes. And she says, should she name, she says she's got the recording of the phone conversation, should she name the senior official, she's saying. It's very, you know, it's, it's blackmail that. But um, that's interesting. That's potentially spicy. It sounds very much like, to me, this Michelle Moan thing. She's thinking to herself, she thinks she's going down, right? So she thinks as things are, she's going down. She's thinking, if I'm going down, I'm taking you lot with me. So that could be a bit spicy. Nine, oh, absolute classic. So, um, West Bromwich is going to be a new constituency. At the moment, you've got West Bromwich East and West Bromwich West, and there's boundary changes. There's going to be a new constituency of West Bromwich and presumably some others around it as well. And so at the moment, it's Tory, West Brom East and West Brom West are Tory seats, which presumably means West Bromwich as the new constituency would be a Tory seat. But really, it's a Labour area. And it's one of those that flipped Conservative for 2019 for various Corbyn levelling up Brexit reasons, right? So it's not one you'd expect to go back to the Tories. But the point is, right now, it's a Tory seat. New constituency, if it, if it had been established in 2019, would have been a Tory seat. And they were supposed to be selecting their candidate for the election this week. And they couldn't because not enough Tory party members turned up to vote. They, they weren't quorate. So that basically suggests to you that the Tory party members in that area can't be bothered to fight for a seat that technically they already have. That shows the level of optimism amongst Tory party members. Because if they couldn't be bothered to turn up to a meeting to select their candidate, they certainly can't be bothered to go out and about knocking on doors promoting the candidate that they couldn't be asked to even select, right? So and we're going to see that, I think, in a few other seats as well. So a lot of these seats that are going to be Target seats for the Lib Dems or Labour, I think we're going to see a lot of Tory party members who cannot be asked to go out campaigning. That's going to be a massive problem for the Tories. And then finally, okay, I did a video on this one, the old uh, Network North. So the, the Rushy Sunak's boasting that he's cancelled HS2 to give a load of money to Network North. We'll spend it on projects, sorry, I've knocked my mic. We'll spend it on projects to, to, to boost the, the northern economy, Network North, we'll call it. And you go, OK, well, there's quite a lot of projects in the south there. But they put out, the Department for Transport put out a poster this week uh, boasting about spending about a quarter of a billion of pounds of this Network North money for filling in potholes in London, which is not in the north. And I ridiculed the hell out of it, of course. Um, it was quite outrageous, absolutely outrageous. And they've since taken that tweet down. They've cancelled. Someone has pointed out to them, yeah, we're getting ridiculed for this. And there's other people that, that find it not so much ridiculous as outrageous. This is a bad look. They've deleted the post. So really, not a good week for the Tory party going into Christmas and heading when they come out the other end of this Christmas into election year. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.